I have a distinct memory of being nine years old and sitting at the little desk in the kitchen trying to write my essay for the New Hampshire 48 4,000 footers and the New England 67. I'm doing just that again, except now it's for completing the New England 100 highest list. This morning while I was looking through old photos to put into a montage of my family's hiking, I pondered where was the best place to start recounting my journey. I'll start at the beginning from my first time hiking on Cannon Mountain when I was three years old. I was ecstatic to find snow on our way up the trail, and this is my overarching memory of the hike, wonder and excitement. I do not dwell on the fact that I had a temper tantrum at the top of the fire tower. I instead remember my discoveries and the song my family composed on the descent, which has motivated us on many hikes since then. Fast forward through many impactful hikes to the day I summited Musilaki, my final mountain in the 48. It was such an amazing day, accentuated by the beauty of the mountain with undercast conditions. The entire hike I was powered by the excitement of finishing my first list. At the top we took pictures with the 48 sign that I had created the night before. On the way down the mountain, I was thinking of the few mountains I had left to hike in the 67 and wondered what was to come after. At the time, I was amazed at how I'd summited 48 mountains, but I didn't realize that by completing that list, I was not even halfway to 100. My last hike in the 67 was much more memorable, being on my ninth birthday. We started out by going down to the community kitchen in the old hotel that we stayed in. It was definitely haunted. We ate birthday cake for breakfast and watched the snow fall softly in the street outside the drafty windows. We drove around trying to find the correct trailhead and were confused by the instructions we were following. We wondered, as we have done many times before, if this was going to be the time that we would actually give up on a hike and try again another day. Although this option was seriously considered, we persevered and found the correct path, trudging through over a foot of fresh snow. The ascent was beautiful in the snow and was straightforward once we found the trail. We made it to the top and couldn't stay long because of the frigid temperature and wind. I'm just now finding out that we didn't actually take a family picture at the top, even though it was our last of the 67, because it was so cold. We went down quickly but slowed down when we found fresh bear tracks in the snow on the trail. Soon after that, I was walking down the trail through a muddy patch and started to sink. I tried to keep walking, but my boots were stuck, like quicksand. I stepped right out of my boots and fell into the snow, losing them in the mud. That was my most memorable hiking experience ever, and it even trumps being dropped in the freezing cold river while my dad was helping me rinse the mud off my boots before getting back in the car at the end of the hike. Fast forward to today, I've been working up to this point for 12 years. I'm now left with an empty feeling, wondering what I'm supposed to do next. Each time I get sad about finishing, I remind myself of the amazing things I've done and how long I've been working towards this point. I've learned a lot since that magical first hike on Cannon Mountain, but now I understand that the journey is the important part of the accomplishment, not the finishing of it. The journey is the part that taught me valuable life lessons, each step and foot of elevation shaping who I am today. I wouldn't be me without hiking, my book, my athleticism, my perseverance, my love for the outdoors. I owe it all to hiking. <laughs>